Hey everyone, hello and welcome, Tony Bing here. For this test centre video I'll be having a look at Magic. Now, she is a character I've played quite a lot, however, it is more the summon side of things I have experience on, so while we're looking at the melee side of things I won't be able to offer a great amount of insight, but hopefully I can add some useful information in regards to the summon sides. My initial first look at it, it's a bit like Doom summon, a little bit disappointing, it can feel a bit passive at times, however, I'm hoping they give her the Ultron treatment, as I'm now calling it, where they kind of tinker about with the summons and they make it a whole lot more enjoyable. But we'll start off with Soul Sword first. So with this tree, it doesn't appear that a great deal has actually changed. We start off with Soul Slashing, which is the basic melee attack that restores 5 spirit on hit. And then we have Stepping Disc. This has got the usual 4 second cooldown and 3 charges. And then we have 7 League Step. Nothing really changed there. While you use that skill, you are invulnerable. And then we have Soul Cleaving. With this, it does 25% extra damage against enemies under the effect of Soul Brand. And this is Soul Brand here. And then next up in this tree, we have Sorceress Eruption which is your immobilize and also your weaken and then we follow that up with step to me and what this does is it kind of pulls enemies towards magic and then we have soul shockwave this is previously this would be in our kind of limbo range tree but it's been moved into the the soul sword one it still is tagged as a ranged attack and it does piercing so for each enemy it goes through it does 10% reduced damage up to a maximum of 40% reduction and then we have Soul Sever there which is the Execute. So simple enough. Let's now look at the more summon and sorcery side of tree which is called Limbo. So like the last tree this one is very similar to live. There is a, a few options that have unfortunately been stripped out of skills and they're gained back through talents. And that also applies to summons. You'll notice we don't have the spitting demons and we also don't have the big fat tanky demon whose name I can't remember so he's called fat tanky demon. But you can regain him through talents but it does seem a pity that you have to do that when the skill could be here. We have space for it but again it's test center everything is subject to change so if you feel the same get on the forums and, and get telling the developers that. But let's look at the actual individual skills now. The first one we look at is Command Lesser Demons and this will summon the melee demons and if you use this when you already have it, when it's on your bar, they will attack the target location. And then following that up we have Dark Pact. This is different I believe. It absorbs damage equal to 40% of your max health per lesser demon summoned plus 120% of your max health per major demon summoned. So it's the damage shield there really. And then we have Spirit Fangs, which is just your main spender. That still scales off summon ally damage, thankfully. And then Soul Brand. Now this on live, I believe, had the specs and they can be regained through the actual uh, talents, the same way you would with specs. Was it Vampire Incantation? I think it was maybe called actually on live. So I was through for a second there. I think it was. I think they've changed the name. But next up here, enemy, we have Command Neastri, I'm going to say that's called. And this one will activate the big flying green wing demon there. And as mentioned, if you want to summon the fat tank one, as I call them, you can do that through talents. Next up anyway, we have Vengeful Spirits. This has changed slightly in that souls are now collected whenever you defeat enemies as opposed to on live where souls are collected when you actually do damage. It does still scale off summon ally damage and really when you get all your, your souls you're wanting to fire them off at the same time there. But next up we have Bone Wall. Just operates the same as on live and a skill that I'm sure in time with the difficulty slider it will become useful. And then we have Eternal Servitude, which is the one where you can take a minion and control them there. And then we're finishing up with Otherworldly Nova, which is your signature. 
and I can't remember it applying the damage over time effect of Soul Brand. I'm pretty sure it didn't on live, but it did do the restoring health. I can remember using it every so often to get my health pool back up. But let's now look at the talents and traits. Now with this tree we'll start off with the offensive trait and that is the Soul Sword. So summon ally damage 25%. The arch type is Blaster, that gives a bonus to fighting and energy. And then we have Eldritch Armor, so health and hit. The arch type is Tough and we have a bonus multiplier to both defense and deflect with also the 8% damage reduction when we use a melee power there. So for talent line number one, we start off with Bile Demons. So Command Lesser Demons transforms into Command Lesser Bile Demon. There we go there. As I see, I don't see any reason that actual skill can't be there and free up a talent slot. Hopefully that will change. But next up, we have Spirit Fangs fires fewer projectiles in a tighter line at a higher rate. This is quite nice, we'll show this off. There we go there. Certainly a lot faster, a lot more concentrated for single targets. And next up in this line we have Deadly Fangs. So Sorcery Powers apply Soul Blaze. Spirit Fangs gains the following effects. Fires more projectiles in a wider arc. Cooldown 6 seconds. Damage 150. And also you gain a buff to Soul Blaze which is a melee power damage 15%. So you've got your, really your summon, your sorcery and then you've got your melee talents there. Some of the other talents follow that but a few of the lines are just really as mentioned taking certain parts of skills and putting them back in again. But there's a wider range version of that skill on the cooldown. But for talent line number two now we have blood in the air. Soul brand increases all damage magic and our demons deal to affected enemies. A skill here. So this is the same as a specialization on live and branded mind. Soul Brand's base damage is automatically applied whenever you hit enemies with sorcery power, which is nice if you're feeling the crunch when it comes to bar space. And when Soul Brand is manually activated, enemies will become confused attacking each other. I can see me actually using that one. And then we have Burning Brand. Soul Brand reduces all damage affected enemies deal to magic and our demons, and enemies defeated while under the effects of Soul Brand explode, dealing damage to nearby enemies. I think that second part of the tooltip is potentially new there. But talent line number three, we have Dark Alliance. So Dark Pack transforms into Dark Alliance. There we go, we can see that's changed there. Bit of a tooltip error down the bottom here, because it says Dark Alliance summons two random lesser demons. When activated, it does not require demons to be summoned and always absorbs damage equal to, it says 28415% of your max health, but it is actually 28,415 health, which would be 120% of what I have just down there. But the next talent we have is Limbo's Enforcer. So Command Neastri transforms into Command Fist of Neastri. I really can't say that name, so apologies however I pronounce that. Uh, and this is the big fat tank guy, as I called him. So, a durable melee minion who will attract the attention of enemies. And there he is there. Big handsome guy that he is. Now, next up we have Step and Disc Mastery. So, Step to Me cooldown 8 seconds. Step to Me damage 200%. Step to Me's pull in effect cannot be resisted. And 7 League Step gains 100% duration. And Step and Disc cooldown comes down by 1 second. And then we have Blood Spirit. So Vengeful Spirits transforms into Hungry Spirits. With this, Hungry Spirits cost health instead of Spirit. Generates souls automatically over time and deals damage, bonus damage, based on the amount of health spent. So if we click this, we can see this going up. Whereas a moment ago when we mentioned it, you had to actually defeat enemies to gain it. So again, I like ones like that. I think I'm quite lazy. Uh, at heart and I like talents that can activate automatically or regenerate automatically so I'm, I'm very happy that the option is there. Next up anyway we have Restless Spirits so you automatically trigger two Vengeful Spirits whenever you use Spirit Fangs, Soul Shockwave, Soul Brand or Sorceress Eruption. So let's click this and we've thankfully kept the charges and then we'll fire this off and we'll see them. There we go. You could see quite a few of them there. 
And then next up now we have Sever the Silver Thread. So you gain additional souls when you hit with a melee power. And Soul Sever consumes all souls, gaining the following benefits per charge consumed. Damage 50%, critical hit chance 20%. And that is this skill here. So that could really be quite powerful when you're looking at an Execute. 50% extra damage and also 20% extra critical hit chance. That could make that really nice. For the fifth and final talent line, we have Explosive Will. So with this, Soul Shockwave cooldown is 8 seconds. Damage goes up by 200%. The area of effect goes up by 300%. And then we have Sorceress Eruption, 8 second cooldown, 200% damage, area of effect goes up by 50% there. And then we have Unworldly Command. When you use Unworldly Command, Nova, which is your signature, your demon minions deal 100% additional damage for 10 seconds. So, pretty simple, that's your summon talent there. And then finally we have Disciple of Limbo. So, back from Limbo, causes a captured minion to fire twice as many soul projectiles and deal 300% more damage with its own attacks and the cooldown comes down by 5 seconds. Now I will show you Levitating Disc animation for it looks very nice. There we go. I do like that. 800 travel speed for me just seems right as well. 1000 was a bit too much, 800 seems spot on. Makes us highly mobile. There we go, she's very nice. She is simple enough, I'm not, as much as I was a fan of Magic on Live, I'm not blown away the way I have been with some other characters like uh, Loki and so on, so fingers crossed they can do a bit of iterating on her, and get a bit more kind of, a bit more variety into her, her skills, but d d despite my reservations, I hope this video was useful for anyone that doesn't have access to Test Centre at the moment, and I'll see you all again soon for another video.